Ever wondered how a single strand of hair can solve a murder mystery? Welcome to the compelling world of forensic science, where even the smallest piece of evidence can crack open a case. Forensic scientists are the real-life detectives, employing a fascinating array of techniques to uncover the truth. From analyzing DNA to interpreting blood spatter patterns, they weave together the intricate narrative of a crime. So, buckle up for an intriguing journey. Stay tuned as we delve into the world of forensic science, where every piece of evidence tells a story. In 1987, DNA fingerprinting made headlines worldwide with the solving of a double murder case. This case was that of Colin Pitchfork, a baker from Leicester, England, who became the first person ever to be convicted of murder based on DNA fingerprinting evidence. So, what is DNA fingerprinting? Imagine it as a unique barcode that represents your genetic makeup. It's a technique that involves the identification and evaluation of specific areas of DNA, your genetic material. These areas are unique to each individual, making them a reliable tool for identification. Now, let's delve into the Colin Pitchfork case. In the mid-80s, two girls were tragically murdered in the English village of Narborough. The perpetrator left behind a crucial piece of evidence at both crime scenes. DNA at the time, DNA fingerprinting was a nascent technology, but the local police decided to give it a try. They collected DNA samples from thousands of local men in the first ever mass DNA screening. However, Pitchfork evaded capture by persuading a friend to provide a DNA sample in his place. But, as fate would have it, Pitchfork's cunning plan was overheard in a pub. The information reached the police, who then questioned Pitchfork and took his DNA sample. The DNA from the crime scenes matched Pitchfork's DNA, leading to his conviction. This case was a landmark moment in forensic science, illustrating the power of DNA in solving crimes. So why is DNA fingerprinting so reliable? It's because of its precision. It can differentiate between individuals with a high degree of accuracy, even identical twins who share the same genetic makeup. This is possible because the areas of DNA used in fingerprinting are highly variable between individuals. This technique is now a cornerstone of modern forensic science. It's not just used in solving violent crimes, but also in identifying bodies, resolving paternity disputes, and even tracking the origins of a disease in epidemiology. With DNA, even the smallest piece of evidence can lead to a big break in a case. It has revolutionized the field of forensic science, providing a powerful tool that can bring justice to light, even in the most complex cases. Think your fingerprints are insignificant? Think again. Imagine the shock that lawyer Brandon Mayfield must have felt in 2004 when he was wrongfully linked to the Madrid train bombings. His life was turned upside down, all because of a fingerprint misidentification. This story serves as a stark reminder of the power and potential pitfalls of fingerprint analysis. Fingerprint analysis is a cornerstone of forensic science. It's based on the principle that no two people, not even identical twins, have the same fingerprints. The unique patterns formed by ridges and valleys on our fingertips are formed while we're still in the womb and remain unchanged throughout our lives. The process of fingerprint analysis is both fascinating and meticulous. It begins with the careful collection of prints at a crime scene. Using dusting powders, chemical fuming, or alternate light sources, investigators make the invisible prints visible. Then comes the challenging part, comparing these collected prints with known prints from suspects or databases. This comparison involves scrutinizing the minutia, or specific points of interest within the patterns. Analysts look for similarities in ridge endings, bifurcations, and other features. It's a painstaking process that requires a keen eye and a deep understanding of fingerprint patterns. But as we learned from the Mayfield case, the process is not infallible. Fingerprint analysis is subjective, relying on human interpretation. Two analysts might not always agree on the number of minutiae or their significance. In Mayfield's case, the FBI analysts mistakenly matched his prints with those found at the scene of the Madrid bombings. It was a case of human error that led to a profound mistake. Despite such instances, fingerprint analysis remains a vital tool in forensic science. It has helped solve countless crimes and brought justice to many victims. But it's a delicate art that requires precision and expertise. It's a constant reminder that in the world of forensic science, even the smallest details can have the most significant impact. As seen in the Mayfield case, fingerprint analysis is an art that requires precision and expertise. Did you know blood spatters can speak volumes? Welcome to the captivating world of forensic blood spatter analysis. Our tale today revolves around Warren Horanek, 
a man whose fate was sealed by the silent yet telling language of blood. Warren Horonek, a former police officer, was convicted largely on the evidence from blood spatter analysis. His wife tragically died from a gunshot wound, and he insisted it was self-inflicted. However, the patterns of blood spatters told a different story, one that contradicted his claims of innocence. But how does this blood spatter analysis work? Well, it's a fascinating blend of physics and biology. When blood leaves the body under force, it behaves according to the laws of physics, forming specific patterns that can provide critical insights into a crime. Each blood stain is like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle, and it's the job of a forensic scientist to put these pieces together. The size, shape, and distribution of the blood stains can reveal significant details about the nature of the injury, the direction and velocity of the blood, and even the position of the victim and assailant at the time of the crime. In Horonek's case, the blood spatter analyst focused on the high-velocity impact spatter found on his shirt, which suggested that he was in close proximity when the gun was fired. This key piece of evidence contradicted Horonek's story and was a major factor in his conviction. Yet, it's important to remember that blood spatter analysis is not a standalone technique. Just like other forensic tools, it's most effective when used in combination with other investigative methods. For instance, in the Horonek case, the blood spatter evidence was corroborated by other forensic findings, such as gunshot residue analysis and DNA testing. Forensic blood spatter analysis is truly a testament to our ability to unravel the truth from the smallest details. It shows that even in the face of the most silent and seemingly insignificant witnesses, science has a way of making them speak. Blood spatters may be silent witnesses, but in forensic science, they can be the loudest voice in the room. What if I told you insects could solve crimes? Yes, you heard it right. Insects, often considered mere pests, play a crucial role in the intriguing world of forensic science. This aspect of forensic investigation is known as forensic entomology. Let's delve into a real-life example. The case of David Westerfield in the early 2000s is a prime illustration of how insects can aid in solving crimes. Westerfield was convicted for a heinous crime, and a significant part of the evidence against him came from, you guessed it, insects. Forensic entomologists examined the larvae found at the crime scene and on Westerfield's property. These insect larvae, or maggots, helped in determining the time of the unfortunate event. How, you ask? Well, the life cycle of these insects is extremely predictable. By understanding the stage of growth, forensic entomologists could pinpoint the time frame in which the crime occurred. Moreover, the type of insects found at the scene can provide clues about the location of the crime. Different insects are attracted to different environments, and their presence or absence can tell us a lot about the place of death. In Westerfield's case, the insects found matched the environment of his property, further linking him to the crime. Forensic entomology is not just about determining time and place of death. It also aids in identifying whether the body was moved post-death if there were drugs in the system of the deceased, and even if the body was stored indoors before being dumped outside. It's a fascinating field that combines biology, entomology, and criminology, contributing significantly to solving crimes. From this, we can see that forensic entomology is much more than just about bugs. It's about piecing together a puzzle, a puzzle that can bring justice to light. So the next time you see a bug, remember it might just be on a crime-solving mission. Sometimes the smallest creatures can shed light on the darkest crimes. Forensic science is a fascinating and complex field that often holds the key to unlocking the truth behind crimes. This journey has taken us through the intricate corridors of forensic investigation, unveiling the power and precision of these techniques. We've delved into the world of DNA fingerprinting, a technique that has revolutionized the way we solve crimes. Like a unique barcode for each individual, DNA can lead us directly to the culprit or exonerate the innocent. We've also explored the art of fingerprint analysis. The intricate swirls and loops of a fingerprint, unique to each individual, can leave an indelible mark at a crime scene. These silent witnesses often prove to be vital clues, guiding investigators to the truth. Next, we've navigated the secret language of blood spatter analysis. Each drop of blood, through its shape and pattern, tells a tale of force, angle, and sequence of events. It's a silent narrative written in crimson, waiting to be deciphered. And finally, we've uncovered the truth behind forensic entomology. It may seem bizarre, but the life cycle of insects found at a crime scene can provide invaluable information about the time of death, helping to piece together a timeline of events. Remember, 
In the world of forensic science, every piece of evidence tells a story. So, next time you're reading a crime novel, you'll know the real science behind the fiction. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.